how many people are we talking and how long? Sorry, it's a bad different question. Is it, is it five people a year? Is it 20 people five years? How, what's, what's the loss of what effort do you need? Um, I'm not sure because I never manage people, but <laughs> I would guess if we have like two good uh, developers like working full time, just getting just getting the Linux kernel to work, for example, for a claim com using claim. Because I think the issue is you're, you're saying it's wonderful for marvelous architecture. It's very clean compared to GCC. You develop past it. Yes, I agree with all of that. It's wonderful. But then you've got a huge inertia where if you want to get products out, they don't want to spend. They want to take the risk. You're not saying it's better code or it's faster compilation or anything. You know, there's no tangible benefit. There's a there's a very tangible track. So Something. Yeah, yeah. Something I would like to see, for example, to generate some kind of hype would be someone and getting like a whole distribution, distribution, Linux distribution, and compile it with LVM, for example. But we simply don't do that because we don't have anyone like willing to do that. You know, it's like another thing would be we we could have like we have three guys. For example, one working to get a distribution compiled, a whole distribution compiled with LVM and Clang. Another guy to make sure that Clang has the, the right toolchain support. And another guy to to see and discover why it's not compiling the Linux kernel or apply the right patches to Clang and to the Linux kernel. And you know, that would be like I think just that would be like a great improvement. We simply don't have it, but because we simply don't have people working on it, you know. Benchmarks on R against GCC. Like I've seen benchmarks on x86 on Browns, but are they good at Yeah, actually, in 2009, <coughs> in the in Battle Links Conference Europe, I showed some results like comparisons between like the size, code size and speed. It's like you said, it's like sometimes GCC beats LVM and sometimes LVM beats GCC. It's kind of. Uh, that, to, 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 to answer the question directly, yes. Um, there's some work being done in the tool chain and working group in Lenaro, which they probably. They take LLVM and build it, they've done some tweaks as well. So I'm not sure where it is, it's somewhere in the wiki, they usually the answer in the night. Um, quite where it is, I don't know. So, um, pretty obvious uh, projects would be <coughs> to try to use LLVM with uh, Yocto just to plug it in as its tool chain. That would be great. It, yeah. It's really pretty simple to just drop in. Uh, what, what um, if you're going to do that, you'd expect to make some, have to make some fixes. What portion of the fixes do you think would be to LLVM and client versus um, to the source code that has always been tested and used only with GCC? Yeah, that's one of the problems because um, I followed some discussion, discussions, like I think it's one year ago, one year and a half ago, of LLVM in the, in the Linux kernel discussion list about something that people were discussing if it was like, oh, this is, you are not writing the code correctly. Oh no, you're not compiling the code correctly. So you like starting the discussion. Just like, we can only rely on on I don't know people uh, just like I don't know how to solve that, you know. But we expect people to to get in some, some kind of. Yeah, I think you start from the position that kernel code is right and your compiler is wrong. In a project like Yocto, the kernel is an important part. It's yep. a very small part in comparison to all the other. 500 or 1,000 packages that each have their own maintenance project that you would need to use to put the patches off, etc. So, you know, the uh, adhering to uh, existing incorrect code is actually quite tempting in comparison to try to fix all the projects that are yeah. wrong. But how many, you know, <coughs> you think that I, I think it's all it's all a matter of uh, you know like a good discussion. Discussion. If you say if you go to the claim list and say, oh, I know that we were writing like wrong stuff according to the standards. But what if we only have like compiler switch here to gather all stuff that it's wrong right now and we put a lot of fixes, you know? It's like I, I think it's all a matter of how you approach the community and ask them, you know, to do the right stuff or to like let's let's do the wrong stuff for a while and then we can get to the to the right point, you know. And I think like the, the people from the, the Clang and all VM communities are really accepted when you go with a with a nice approach with them, you know. Like because you just can can go and, and say to people that are developing compilers for ten or fifteen years to say like oh your compiler is wrong you know you have to go like I know what you're doing but you know you have a little bit of thank you 
isn't more or less the same thing happening with every upgrade from one TCC version to the next TCC version anyway. If you read the release notes of TCC releases, every time they break something that they say, okay, you've been doing this incorrect for the whole time, now let's fix your code. And like LLVM should be doing something similar, right? Yep. Um, like, is there something like, a, say, an upgrade manual from, say, GCC 4.5 to the latest LLVM, for example? Like, is anyone working on something like that? No, no, I don't know of anything about that. Because um, usually people in LLVM like development is so so quick and so like right. we, okay. the, the policy is to accept as much good stuff as possible. So if it from one version to another um, it goes more compliant to the standard, it will like break stuff. Yeah. Okay. And is there some sort of established release model for LLVM yet? Like um, for GCC, for example, if you have GCC 4.5.0. Uh, your code is probably going to work on 4.5.1 and 4.5.2 as well without changes. Is there something like those stable release streams for LLVM? The only thing we guarantee to work between releases is the bit code. We do like an uh, automatic upgrade if we change anything on the bit code description. Okay. But um, to, to the other kind of stuff we don't have, we just say like it works for this release and that's it, you know. But I think it's all a matter of like using it for more projects and have more people say, oh, we need to have something like that so people can put that on the documentation and stuff like that, you know. Um, we have just more three minutes. Okay. Um, I think you mentioned Apple before. Um, are, they, are they shipping? I mean, is LLVM the back end? Xcode. Xcode, yeah. Right. So my question is, I mean, clearly Apple must be investing internally if this is something that they care about. Um, but you know, we're also hearing from you that you know you need more developers. So is that because of the licensing? I mean, LLVM's BSD. Yes, is that right? BSD, yeah. So does that mean Apple's busy innovating the hell out of LLVM and Cupertino, and they're just not pushing stuff back? I mean, what's no, the, what's kind of happening there? Actually, the most part of the active developers, I think, they work for Apple. So it's like right. it's it's very active and it's it's very open source. But um, we, we just don't have like the same amount of people like putting the effort to do for some other kind of OS or you know stuff like that. I bet if we have the same amount of developers, we would have like the same the same stuff. <coughs> if you if you watch the commit list, you're going to see that uh, most part of the commits, like day by day basis, are from people from there. So. Do you have an estimation of uh, how much time does the company need to invest in a project, let's say some uh, small footprint, uh, let's say like WRT uh, distribution that was uh, compiled with DCC to the LLVM? I mean, how much man months for the same optimization that has been done on the DCC part? For the I think it will depend on the target, you know? Can you repeat the For, let's say, ARM target. Yeah, he's asking like, uh, for example, it has a project like Open WRT, and it, it is compiled like since, uh, since it exists with GCC, and they guarantee they, they they have some specific optimizations. They have the code running in some way that they are sure that GCC can do that, and they want to do that the same with LVM, right? Mm -hmm. um, how much time that w that will take? Right, that's yeah. the question. Yeah. Um, I think, and I answered him that it depends on the target. If the target already has like several optimizations that the GCC implement, I think that won't be a great effort. But otherwise, you're just going to have to implement all the optimizations for your target that your target doesn't have. For example, for ARM, I think it would be easier. But for MIPS, you would have to implement lots of stuff, you know. But I, I'm not sure, like, in how much. Like, I think in six from one year, you can have a lot of stuff done and make it stable. For, for, for example, MIPS. But for ARM, it would be a matter of tweaking stuff. <coughs> well, if, I, if I take some random user space library, like GTK or Glib or Qt or whatever, uh, does it does it build with LLVM? Like, does autoconf, automake, and so on generates make files that uh, work well with LLVM? Or? Uh, it, it can compile, for example, Qt. Okay. So, with there's like it? lots of random projects. Okay. With, you know. Without changes in the Qt build system. Yeah. Okay. For example, if you just can't do that with Clang, you can do that with LVM GCC for the ARM target, for example, or using Dragon Egg. Okay. 
Um, if you guys have any questions, we can discuss later because I have to go for the next presentation right now.